So in terms of the medium to long-term playbook, it's obvious. You can open up if you've got high vaccination rates. So I'll be watching to see what efforts China makes mm. to ramp up vaccination in the seniors. Mm. Second, you do need to increase healthcare capacity. Yeah. And in a place as large as China, you know, it's one thing to talk about healthcare facility in Shanghai, but once you get into the far west mm. or in the rural areas, you, you face considerable challenges. Yeah. So based on that, I think the playbook is obvious. I do expect China to open. It's just a matter of time. Second, I would expect to see a more variegated response, which means it can't be one size fits all. Okay. The key variables that every public official in every city and province in China will be, what's my vaccination rate for seniors? What's my medical capacity. Mm -hmm. And then you do need to make changes to your protocols for you know, whether people can quarantine at home, how many days they need to take off from work, yeah. all the things which, I mean, in a sense, we've already done yeah. in Singapore. Yeah. And sure. what Singapore illustrates is that you can, with enlightened, careful, deliberate policy mm -hmm. and preparation, open up and open up fully. Right. That's where we're at. Right. I've got to ask you about the protests that we've seen in some of the major Chinese cities. What's your take on that? And to what degree did that outpouring of anxiety and pent-up frustration uh, have a bearing on the decision by the leadership to start loosening up these restrictions? Again, I wouldn't overread that. I see the yes. protests as just frustration and impatience with the law. And frankly, I think at this stage of the, of the pandemic, if any administration anywhere in the world tried to lock down, you would face considerable resistance. Fair so enough. I see that Fair as enough. almost par for the cause. Uh, the question now is how quickly China will respond. And at least based on my interactions with Chinese officials, uh, I, I, I think their primary parameter is public health. Mm. And as I said, I do expect them to open. I do expect the process to take time and I expect a variegated uh, response according to circumstances. We're hearing about a late March timeline in terms of a full reopening and I must admit things seem to be leading up mm. favourably into that direction. Does that make sense uh, to you in terms well, of we're now in the December. Um, it, look, look at our experience in Singapore. When Delta hit us last year, actually there were moments last year when we were worried about capacity healthcare capacity to deal with the waves. By the time this year came around and we had Omicron, you know, BA1, 2, then BA4 and 5, and then XBB, we had three waves this year. But with high vaccination rates, with sufficient capacity, we were able to ride out the waves. We expect another wave now as we all travel and resume uh, full service all over the world. But we are reasonably confident that we'll get through this. Now, the point is, China can do this, but you need to understand that they are huge, mm. they are variegated, and they'll need time. So sometime in the, between the next three to six months, I would expect to see a significant opening. Now, that has profound implications for the global economy. Oh, absolutely. More so than an oil price cap. 